Welcome to our second session related to the critical path method. In the previous session, we built the precedence diagram. And now we will use that precedence diagram to calculate the early start and the early finish of the project. We will do that for all the activities and we call this the forward pass. Let's have a look at the forward pass and how we will calculate early start and early finish. On the left bottom side, I put a small legend about the node, the activity node. On the top you find early start and early finish in blue. And these are the parameters we are going to calculate. So if you are in doubt, you can refer to this little legend to see what those numbers mean. On the top right side, there are some formulas. I will come back to those formulas while we are going through the network. Let's assume that this project is done in a company where the working time is from 9 till 5. We have no rest in the weekends, so we work 7 out of 7. It will simplify our calculations a little bit. When we look at the project, we see that there are two activities which have no precedence. It means they are the first activities that we will start working on once the project starts. Let us assume that we will start with the project on April the 1st. So activity A will start on April 1st. The activity will start at 9 a.m. and it will take two days. It means we will work on April the 1st and April the 2nd. So in the second day ends on April the 2nd at 5 p.m. We can also use the formula to calculate this. The relationship between early finish and early start is given by the formula early finish is equal to early start plus the duration minus 1. So in our case, the early start is 1, the duration is 2, and minus 1 gives us the number 2, like we found it in our first calculation. The next thing is to look at the successor. C is a successor of activity A, and C can only start when A is finished. Since A finishes at the end of the working day of April the 2nd, C can only start in the morning of April the 3rd. Again, counting three days means that Activity C will finish in the evening of April the 5th. We can do the same for activity D because we only have one predecessor A, so the early start of D is also equal to 3. We count two days for the duration of D, so 3 plus 2 minus 1 equals 4, and D will finish on April the 4th. Now for activity E, it's a little bit different. We know when activity A is finishing, but E can only start when A and B are finished. So now we first have to calculate early start and early finish for activity B. So B, again no predecessor, can start on April the 1st and will finish on April the 4th. And now we see the early finish dates for the predecessors of activity E. Both of them have to be finished, so we look at the highest number and B is determining the start time of activity E. It is only when B is finished that E can start. So E can only start on April the 5th. Again, 5 plus 5 minus 1 
means that E can finish on April the 9th. For F, it's a little bit easier. There is only one predecessor, so F can start on April the 5th. F takes two periods, so F will finish on April the 6th. Activity G, the same thing. 5 plus 1 is 6. And the early finish time is 6 plus 3 minus 1, which is April 8. For H, we have now three predecessors. And now we have to look. D has an early finish on April the 4th. E has an early finish on April the 9th. And F has an early finish on April the 6th. And we see that activity E is determining the start of activity H. So H can start on April the 10th. 10 plus 3 minus 1. So H finishes on April the 12th. And finally, we can look at J. We have the predecessors G and H. So J can start at 13th of April, 13 plus 3 minus 1 is 15th. So the project will end on the 15th of April. So, not so easy, all these calculations. You have to get used to them because they come back in many exercises and as a project manager, you have to understand them very well. Great job. See you at the next session.